All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. We are going to go ahead and get started with our second lecture uh, for uh, for unit three. And we're going to start talking about insects of uh, of turf grasses. This is going to go along with chapter three in your ornamental and turf textbook. So I do recommend reading the chapter first. Uh, and what I've done here is I've collectively taken uh, several PowerPoints that I've collected, uh, you know, in the past few years, and I've pulled bits and pieces out to collectively give you guys some some more information about the insects that our textbook talks about. The ones that you see in the textbook are not the only ones that you're going to see uh, in your horticulture career. There's going to be more, but we're going to concentrate on the ones that are in chapter three and those will be the ones that you'll be tested on. You're not going to be tested on any other insects um, that you may come across. Only the ones that are in chapter three. These slides in this PowerPoint have um, a lot of a lot of print in them as well. A lot of uh, written information. I'm not going to read that word for word. You guys can uh, you know download the PDF and read that. Uh, this is a lengthy power PowerPoint. Uh, I'm going to try to go through it, um, you know, quickly. We're going to look at the pictures of the insects, and uh, you know, talk a little bit about them. But I don't want to, you know, tie up two hours of your time uh, watching me read word for word um, from the slides. You will have them for your notes, and you can compare them to what's in the book. For testing purposes, we will go what's in the book uh, for your test, your homework. I may or may not pull some of the information from these slides. Um, you know, these chapters are a lot shorter, so it's going to take you know, some digging of uh, information for me to put together a homework assignment for Unit 3 and, and Unit 4, but it's going to be fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing that for you guys. And let's go ahead and get started with this PowerPoint. All right, first of all, we're going to talk about scouting. We've talked about that in, in previous lecture. Uh, we've got to scout. We have to look for the insects um, that we're looking for. And primarily, we're going, to, we're going to see the damage first. We're going to see the damage that these insects are causing to our turf. So we're going to be scouting for that, and then we can determine basically, uh, knowing the damages that these insects cause, what, uh, what type of insect we are dealing with. Um, we're going to see a lot of root feeding insects here uh, in North Carolina. Grub control is a big, a big money maker for lawn care uh, professionals, and uh, we're going to learn more about that. Um, and hopefully, you guys can uh, you know implement this in your business. Uh, most of you are taking insects and disease now uh, with Miss Worthout, and that, uh, in combination with this class, guys, is probably. Um, um, you know, two of the better classes that you could take together. I mean, you guys are getting a lot of information uh, about insects, about disease, you know, both ornamental and turf. And then we're actually running the equipment in the other classes uh, detailed for, for, you know, part of it for, for lawn care. So it's a great, great summer program that we have here at Forsyth Tech. The steps in IPM, again, routinely inspect the turf, um, determine changes that you see, Determine your threshold, you know, and again, that's going to that's going to vary from client to client and from, you know, vary from yourself uh, to your neighbors. Time the pesticide application to the vulnerable stage in the insect's life history. <clears throat> There's so many pesticides out there that affect different life cycles of the insects. So most of your, uh, you know, your root feeding, you know, they're also going to, you know, develop into uh, the mature insect, the adult insect, and then they're going to be leaf uh, leaf feeders. So it's a, lot, it's a lot easier to control some of these insects while they're at the grub stage, while they're in the soil. And then again, return to step one, begin inspecting, scouting, and monitoring all over again. Now we're going to look at some, uh, some insects. These are, you know, from your textbook, you know, ones that are going to, you know, uh, defoliate the plant. They are going to feed on the leaves and they're going to feed on the stems. Cutworms. You know, have the black cutworm, the bronze cutworm, uh, a variegated one. You know, here we have it uh, in the worm and then the adult. Just two good pictures of this. So, uh, basically, 
our textbook only has the, the you know the black and white drawings so we're going through this so you guys will actually um, see the pictures of them like in their larva stage and then the, the you know the full adult stage and most of you will probably see this in Lisa's class too with the insects and disease class but you guys that are you know not near campus and are strictly taking this class online hopefully this will give you a better idea than just the black and white drawings that's in in your textbook identification they're full-grown larvae you know an inch to an inch and a half long here we have the uh, the variegated cutworm uh, it's pictured below um, black cutworms are dark gray above light gray below with the dots probably see more of them around here and then your bronze cut cutworms are a model burgundy brown damage uh, the larva feed on the grass blades or cut the grass off the soil at night during the day they're going to hide under soil they're going to hide underneath leaves sticks and twigs uh, aeration holes and greens are often utilized by cutworms as burrows but however the presence of these aeration holes does not increase the number and they may uh, have one to three generations per year uh, pesticides there yeah, I'm not going to read the pesticides to you guys that's this information uh, uh, for yourself but look you know give good credit to the old Clemson University here for this excellent picture armyworm or the fall armyworm you know, similar to uh, the cutworm. I mean, you know, homeowners, they're not going to really be able to uh, to identify these without the help of, of, you know, people like us. They feed on a variety of grasses, including agricultural grass crops, you know, grains and corns. Um, turf grass is not commonly infested. The material larvae, inch and a half to two inches. It's one way to differentiate it uh, from the, the cutworm. Plus, we're not going to see it. Um, may you know less likely to see it in turf grass um, larvae full or a uh, dull yellow gray with the stripe running lengthwise along the body fall army worm caterpillars uh, feed on a variety of grasses mature larvae reach inch and a half to two inches and the larvae have black stripe down the middle of the back I had a friend who who worked strictly for a seeding company they travel all over um, the United States, southeastern United States, they go up into DC, down all the way into Florida, and all they do is large acreage seeding. A couple years ago, they had a big problem with the fall uh, army work, where it did uh, infect uh, the grasses that they saw. They went and you know done a ton of seeding, and fall army worm infestation was a problem for them. So you will see it uh, in turf grasses, but um, more likely you'll see it in the ag agricultural crops. Populations arrive as annual flights from overwintering, uh, typically kept in check by natural means, although population booms can occur generally after a drought. And there was a drought when uh, when the friend of mine, uh, they were doing a lot of the seeding. It was after a drought. Pesticides for it, you know, we've talked about the carbol uh, insecticides in previous lectures. Bifithrin, uh, trichlorophon. So, a lot of different pesticides that we can use uh, for the armyworm and fall armyworm. Sod webworm. You know, we've all seen these out. Uh, you'll see it when you're mowing. Uh, good picture from Mississippi State here. Uh, but, you know, we'll see these a lot, you know, cutting grass. The adults of the sideworms are frequently called lawn moths. Uh, light-colored moths make short, erratic darting flights to the turf, and when resting, they fold their wings back closely against their bodies. They do. They have that that narrow, narrow body shape. Um, also, their heads uh, appear to have a long uh, snout. They lay their eggs in the lawn, and the older larvae are dirty white to light brown with darker spots about three quarters of an inch long. Damage. They feed on the grass. Uh, feed on the grass blades at night. During the day, they hide in tunnels or burrows. Uh, in the soil. Some species damage the plant crowns as well as the blades. Heavy infestations of the second generation may seriously damage large areas of turf. And although the webworm adults are commonly seen, larval damage is uncommon. Look for dew sparkling on the webs in the early morning or at dusk. Uh, use the flotation method to force the caterpillars to the surface and where they can be counted. The book talks about that a little bit more 
you know, floating, uh, yeah, flotation, soap and water flush on page 39. And uh, soapy solution is made by adding one ounce of mild dishwashing detergent to one gallon of water. It is best to scout for side webworms in June and again in early August since side webworms have two generations per year. And if you guys get bored one evening or on the weekend, you know, this is a fun fun thing to do is to go out and see if you can, uh, you know, catch these guys. A little, uh, you know, fingernail polish that you can put like in a mason jar uh, and, and go out and find these guys and actually have your own samples. Uh, you know, my kids enjoy doing that. And that's kind of something, you know, daddy daughter time that, that we do. Pesticides for it again. You know, there's that carbol, trichlorophon, asphate, um, bifithrin, you know, so a lot of a lot of these pesticides are, are good, um, you know, for, for the insects that, that we're going to talk about. Bill bug, you know, your book just calls it the bill bug. Well, no, they're going to state it as bluegrass as well. But this is uh, not such a pretty looking character here. Adults, long snouted, uh, quarter inch long gray to black beetles, strongly tapered abdomens. Uh, they're found walking on hard surfaces in the spring prior to depositing eggs and grass sheets. The plump legless white larva first feed in the stems and on the roots. Um, lawns are off colored, irregularly shaped areas that rapidly yellow and finally turn brown. Scout for the larvae by inspecting a square foot sample of the lawn along the margin where dead or damaged grass meets healthy grass. Treatments usually applied in mid-May to early June. Control adults when first noticed migrating in April through May. And there are some of your uh, pesticides, and they're actually using, you know, two types of nematodes for this guy. And again, back to the uh, like uh, the trichlorophon. Um, blade sucking or discoloration bugs. Insects is going to be the chinch bug. Good picture of him. Uh, immature bugs are red, but become dark as they mature. Adults. Fifth of an inch long, have a head that narrowed the thorax shoulder, lightly colored forewings with cons conspicuous black triangle midway along the outside margin. And immature chinch bugs, the nymphs, are similar in appearance to adults except the smaller wings absent, only moderately developed. Damage, populations of 20 to 25, 25 bugs per square feet can cause damage and you may want to uh, look at applying a pesticide uh, at that when you reach that threshold. And here we have a good picture. Um, you know, of the life stages all the way through maturity. The pesticides that we can use for it. Root feeding, grubs. You know, like I said, a good money maker for lawn care guys here in this area. Uh, we have the May June beetles, the Schaefer's, Green June beetle, Jap beetle, and Oriental beetle. And then again, back to the, uh, the bluegrass. Um, bill bug, which we just we just talked about. Yep, we sure did. But we'll talk about it again. All right, jet beetle. You know we've all seen these guys, and they're actually uh, they're kind of fun to play with, uh, and you know. You know, a beautiful shell color there uh, for for these guys. Uh, you just don't want them in your in your roses. You know, at the larvae stage, you know when you when you hear a lot of people talk about grubs, you know it's you know it's 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 the little guys of, of this this guy. Um, this is where it's a whole lot definitely easier to take care of him while he's in this life stage cycle. We can get rid of this. You know, it's a little bit harder to, to, to get rid of this. I mean, the um, best way to do it is to pick them off your plants and squish them. But, you know, we can control control these white grubs pretty pretty easy. Jap beetles, an exotic scarab originally established in New Jersey. Um, they're seven, seven sixteenths of an inch long. The front of the beetle is dark metallic green and the wing covers are tan. There are five small white patches of short hairs along each side of the dorsal abdomen of the beetle. These white patches are key characteristic for identification. If it does not have these white hair patches, it is the false Japanese beetle. 
One of the favorite foods of the adult Jap beetle is rose foliage and flowers, although adults feed on other over 300 species of plants. Larvae feed on the roots of grasses, inspector plants for skeletonized leaves. In the presence of adult beetles, pheromone traps use a rose scented lure to attract the adult beetles. Threshold is seven uh, per square foot. And we could probably go outside right now and dig up a square foot and probably find, um, you know, seven grubs. Um, I know we'd probably definitely do it in my lawn. There's the pesticides for it, you know, a nematode, nematode, back to the trichlorophon. Green June beetle, larva stage, you know, looks a lot like, uh, you know, the Japanese beetle. And then there's the adult. Um, problem with this is, you know, moving plants from nursery to another installation site, you know, we can transport it. Uh, it's green in color, trim with brown along the edge. The undersign is also green. It has a very shiny metallic look. The adults are attracted uh, to mature for overposition, and grubs can be found in many crops and ornamentals that have manure added to the soil. There we can see the size, almost an inch long. Typical scare, uh, characteristics and reach two inches in length. They feed on the roots of turf grasses as well as corn, oat, sour gum, alfalfa, and nursery stock, especially when manure has been added to the soil. Adults feed on a variety of ripening fruits such as apples, pears, and grapes. Tolerance level for this species have not been set. And that would be up to, to you um, or your client. Pesticides, again, nematodes, uh, you know, pretty much the same thing for, um, for the jack beetle. Your chafers, uh, here we have the northern mass chafer. The adults are shiny brown scarabs. Uh, around half inch in length with dark brown mass across the head and dark spot on each side of the thorax. Uh, after overwintering the soil, adults emerge in late June and females lay egg cluster on top of the soil. Adults are uh, nocturnal and do not feed. Northern mass chafers have one year life sample and damage is uh, severe in late summer when the grubs are third instar. I've seen a lot of these guys um, my house. Uh, went outside to feed the dogs last night my wife came out with me and she's like what are all these bugs and it was the Schaefer they were just flying all over the place um, you know what they were going after they were tend to kind of go towards the, the light we had the back porch light on and we were standing out there feeding Lucky and they were going to the window um, trying to uh, I guess get get to the light a few of them got caught in some cobwebs that was kind of fun to watch but uh, you know they're just they're they're predominant right now you know you're going to see them damage they're going to feed on the roots uh, separating crown from the roots the larvae reach maximum size in September and then they move deeper in, into the soil to overwinter healthy turf can tolerate greater than 20 grubs per square foot while stressed turf can uh, tolerate less around 10 per square foot pesticides again nematodes you know same thing as, as the green June bug uh, May or June beetles you know, again, there's that grub. Here's the adult beetle. You know, a lot different looking than the green June beetle or Japanese beetle. All species are, uh, are called May or June beetles. About one inch long, chestnut brown color, and fly to lights in the early summer. The adult scarab beetle feeds on foliage, lays eggs in the turf uh, in early summer. May beetles and summer June beetles, uh, the grubs are whitish brown, and heads are usually found curled in a seat about a half inch to an inch in length. They are the largest grubs found uh, in turf. Damage. Feed on grass roots for three years before becoming adults. The first year the grubs grow up to half inch long and produce little damage. Second year, half inch to three quarters inch in length. The damage becomes more apparent. Second year is the time to control grubs since uh, damage usually is not extensive. And an insecticide will be effective. Four grubs per square foot is when you would want to, to control these guys. The third year, uh, grubs grow to one inch long and damage becomes very apparent, particularly in July and August. Late summer, grubs become adults in pupil chambers and the soil emerge following spring as adults. And here we have the pesticides, you know, same nematodes and the same pesticides for these guys. Oriental beetle. Introduced in Connecticut as early as 1920, 
Um, this beetle is spread across the mid-Atlantic states. Adults are similar size to the jack beetles. However, adult beetles do not have any green, but vary in color from light brown to black, often with uh, darker modeling on the wing covers. Feed on the roots of turf grasses. Adults are active at night and more cryptic uh, compared to uh, jack beetle. And a good pheromone trap is available for these guys. Pesticide and nematodes, you know, same, same, um, both same nematodes and, and the chemicals for, for this beetle. Mole cricket, you know, it's fun to go after, go after these guys. Good for fishing and a good, uh, you know, biological control would be this, uh, this wasper. So, you know, we've seen this, you know, in the early lectures back in unit one. But just read the information about the mole cricket in your textbook. Uh, cultural strategies for turf, you know, turf vigor. Vigorous, steadily growing stands can deter permanent turf damage. Uh, you know, rapidly growing rise on the stones quickly fill in localized dead patches, uh, you know, especially warm season grasses. And then high nitrogen fertilizer can help recover, uh, you know, grass that's been kind of weak and, and, and thinned out. Moisture. High temperature and moisture stress, two groups of insects, the chinch bugs, the side webworms, do most of their damage. Uh, with the grass going into dormancy, making the, uh, damage difficult to detect. When adequate moisture is present, symptoms of damage are easier to detect in the form of yellow leaves and small brown patches. Thatch management affects some insects directly, the chinch bugs also affects the efficiency of insecticide applications. And many of those organic uh, pesticides are going to absorb to the organic manner. Uh, you know, Durzban, you know, attaching itself to the thatch, and then many registered pesticides, guys, you've got to let get down into the soil. Uh, you know, you may have to water it in. Um, a lot of these insecticides you're going to buy, you know, they're they're, they're going to be granular or you know, uh, granular in application. Um, you know, some of them are liquid, but if you get the granulars, you're going to have to make sure that you that you water it in and get that insecticide to the soil. Biological control, predators, parasites, and pathogens that attack uh, pest species. The predators include other insects and sometimes vertebrates. And advantages of the natural control, uh, controls include their safety, relative uh, permanence, and relative economy. Although all these do not apply in all cases. Predators, free living organisms, consume prey. We've studied this in previous lectures. Ground beetles, spiders, some ants, big eyed bugs, uh, mites. Uh, all common. Peritosoids, parasite-like relationship to their host, resulting in host death. You know that. And pathogens, fungus, viruses, bacterial organisms, all can uh, be used for insects. Milky disease, it's a bacterial disease of the Japanese beetle. Uh, milky spore, I'm sure you've heard of that. You can actually purchase that uh, to get rid of the grubs. Uh, We've talked about Thuringianus in previous lectures. And then nematodes, commercially inoculated with a bacterial pathogen used against a number of soil-dwelling uh, soil turf pests. Chemical control, uh, make sure you use state recommendations, important to follow the label directions, and adhere to legal requirements being necessary. Uh, most must be watered in after application. And give credit to entomology at University of Minnesota for most of these slides. Um, Kind of went through this quick. I hope that's okay with you guys. You've got the information to to print out. And guys, you know you don't necessarily have to print them out. When you're taking my test, you can save these slides as a PDF and have them opened. You can download them to your computer and read them. You don't necessarily have to waste paper um, and print these out. Save them as a PDF, and 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 you've got them forever. Um, there's going to be two more lectures. Uh, for unit three, I'm going to try to have them done by tomorrow, uh, Thursday, and have them up. That way I can start working on homework for Friday and uh, hopefully have that up for you Friday afternoon. So in the meantime, just continue reading and uh, watch the lectures, and then you'll have the homework to be uh, readily available by the weekend, hopefully. And you can work on that next week, and then we'll take the test. So any questions, send me an email. Please post something to the discussion board, you know, if it's going out and taking pictures, guys, of these bugs that you see um, in your homes. Um, you know, if you're walking through the turf and you see it, put it, you know, take a picture of it.
put it on the discussion board and say, hey guys, look what I found in my yard. You know, that's going to get you your 1%. I don't like having to put in a zero on Blackboard for something as simple as, as just doing a discussion that's going to give you, you know, five points at the end of the year. So anyway, take care and I'll see you in the next lecture.